so I'll show multiple maps of uh, people's reconstructions of evidences to show where they think uh, domestication of plants and animals happened. We want to look at as many of them as possible because they are all dealing with the same evidence and some have may have used more uh, pieces of evidence than others but nonetheless it's interesting to see how different types of crops and animals and different regions of domestication are inferred by different studies. So this is one of them from PNAS, uh, Proceedings of the National Academies of Sciences, which is one of the very prestigious journals. So we're looking at early Holocene, middle Holocene, and by geographically inferred, so there are many different ways to infer uh, these uh, domestication sites uh, and the black uh, the uh, colors with black circle black lines around them uh, are considered as uh, uh, centers of independent domestication so you can see that here this one doesn't have a black line but this one does so there is some potential link between those centers similarly here uh, so again to uh, put it in the context of what makes us human and how social networks, communication, etc. may have worked or evolved along the way. Uh, <clears throat> we have to also f see if we can find evidence to see whether they were uh, accidentally moved, they were shared, there were some other kind of communication and so on and so forth, right? Uh, negotiations uh, are supposed to have uh, favored evolution of language, for example. So, uh, And there are also ideas about whether exchanges are more frequent and more likely in uh, dry regions uh, as opposed to wet regions. Do wet regions make a, a communities independent of each other because they are self-sufficient or do they still need to get something like salt from somewhere else if they are beginning to cook food uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, So keeping that in mind, this is a map depicting likely centers where the domestication of at least one plant or animal took place. Black outlines around the most widely accepted independent centers of domestication and sources of major diffusion of domesticates uh, are indicated by arrows like these here. So these are of course uh, hypotheses or inferences. Um, green and purple regions respectively are those where the domestication process took place during the late Pleistoc uh, Pleistocene early Holocene uh, transition 12,000 to 8200 BP so again before the Younger Dryas and so on there may have been already uh, attempted agricultural uh, activities uh, domestication attempts because already we were coming out of the uh, Holocene and there were warm periods like the bowling Alarod. And in the middle Holocene, 8200 to 4200 uh, year BP, uh, brown regions represent areas where at present the evidence for domestication is interpreted based upon the presence of domestic forms uh, indigenous to these regions found outside their native distribution. So in these regions uh, there are uh, animals and plants that are non-native, could be potatoes, could be corn, maize, uh, cattle, sheep, whatever, and they are in, in, inferred as uh, where domestication happened through these kind of networks. So it, these are not independent centers of domestication. <clears throat> okay. So letters A to H correspond to those listed in another figure, which I'm not going to uh, go into, but uh, you see uh, what they may mean, right? So we can see the sequence A, B, C, D, and then E and F, G, H. So you can imagine what they are. Let's now look at the regions uh, of uh, where these specific crops and animals may have been domesticated. So we'll go through a couple of chronological charts listing regions where and the time frames over which key plant and plants and animals were domesticated, again going from 12,000 years to about the present, present being when the paper was published. The numbers in black circles represent thousands of years before present. Gray dashed lines represent documented exploitation before domestication 
domestication or posited, uh, posited as necessary lead time to domestication. So as we said, there may have been crops growing around human settlements um, because humans were fertilizing the land through feces, waste, and so on. Uh, and then uh, they may have been consumed but not domesticated. So those are inferred as well. Um, blue dashed lines represent either the management of plants or animals, including translocation, so diffusion of information in some form, or pre-domestication cultivation of plants, neither of which were associated with morphological indications of domestication. So domestication has impacts on evolution of uh, behavior, genetics, and uh, even sizes of different animals. Broiler chickens, for example, have now become very big because of this constant breeding for uh, heavy meat uh, production from chicken. Uh, red bars frame the period over which morphological changes associated with domestication are first documented and a short solid red bar represents the latest time by which domestication occurred. I'm reading this and I won't be able to translate each of this piece of information onto the maps but I just want you to be aware of the various things we're uh, looking at in the tables we look at next. Although early, early Holocene plant domestication took place independently in both the old and new worlds, early Holocene animal domestication was restricted to the Near East. In addition, the majority of plants and animals on this list were domesticated in the Middle Holocene. Additional details and references are given elsewhere. So, we're going here again from the uh, uh, late Pleistocene, early Holocene period, it deep into the modern period, and looking at various regions, and remember the various codes used here, so hard to translate, remember and translate, but you can uh, try to map. But let's just look at the regions and the uh, crops and animals. Southwest Asia, wheat, barley, lentil, pea, chickpea, uh, broad bean, flax, olive, uh, and animals are sheep, goat, pig, cattle, uh, and cats, so taurine, so specific kinds of cattle, so that you can see whether, whether they are uh, native species or could have been brought from uh, elsewhere, okay? South Asia, so Southwest Asia, South Asia, tree cotton, rice, millets, uh, mung bean, pigeon pea, with uh, zebu cattle and water buffalo. So this is now also found in Madagascar, for example. Uh, East Asia, boom corn millet, foxtail millet, uh, different kind of rice, indica here, japonica here, soybean, uh, ramy and melon with pig silkworm so you can see more sophisticated domestications yak horse uh, bactrian camel duck and chicken and in new guinea you have banana uh, taro yam uh, africa arabia so you can see now the earliest timelines are here uh, with uh, either pre-domestication to domestication and uh, so on that we discussed before. Whereas Africa and South, uh, Southern Arabia uh, uh, appear much later here. Uh, so date palm, sorghum, pearl millet, uh, cowpea, hyacinth, uh, taurine cattle, donkey, dromedary camel, dromedary camel and guinea fowl. So that different camels here, Bactrian camel and dromedary camel. Uh, North America, much later and uh, much less uh, time to domestication or, or whatever that interpretation was. Squash, sunflower, some weed, pit seed, doe's foot and so on. Uh, similarly, Mesoamerica, where Turkey was uh, uh, domesticated here, guinea fowl as well. In South America, again, uh, mixed results uh, in terms of timelines. Remember, again, we're going from 12,000 years to the baseline zero year. Uh, chili pepper, which is known to be the center here. Then India, which now uses a lot of chili pepper, actually may have gotten it from outside, whereas India in olden days may have used black pepper corn not uh, chili pepper. Uh, peanut, cotton, cocoa, uh, quinoa, yam and so on and you have llama, alpaca, uh, alpaca I think it's pronounced in a different uh, way, guinea pig and muscovy duck. Okay so another map here independence of land productivity and agricultural 
origins. So you can see that agriculture probably originated based on serendipity and settlements that were maybe driven by megafauna hunting gathering activities and not necessarily knowing where the land was more fertile for agriculture. So these are the centers of origin of food production, the uh, orange uh, places and in many places uh, they uh, most productive agricultural areas of the modern world are not necessarily coincident with them okay so this is western US which is uh, typically dry but it's still productive for certain uh, nuts crops uh, maybe um, artichokes and so on and so forth. Mesoamerica, Andes, Amazonia, a fertile ran, land around the La Plata Basin here in the modern times. Lots of fertile land here but no uh, evidence of uh, origin of food production and of course you have uh, the fertile crescent area which uh, was one of the earlier uh, sites of domestication and food crop production. In China there is a great overlap between productive uh, agricultural areas of the modern times and centers of origin of food production. Does this mean climate hasn't changed or that they were lucky to pick the best place uh, and here uh, not much origin of crops uh, food production shown but here fertile lands are basically non-existent in modern world according to the criteria used uh, in this paper fertile lands here uh, origin of crop production there and so on so domestication and crop production need not be necessarily uh, the same thing but let's not worry about those kinds of details but it tells you how different climates in different regions have different distributions of fertile lands fertile lands in the modern times but obviously there is some link to the past climates as well over the Holocene because climate has changed but we have remained fairly stable um, and there have been some uh, events like the uh, Noah's flood that we will talk about and melting of the Laurentide ice sheet uh, 8200 year event 4200 event and so on which we will look at uh, so the relation between uh, domestication crop production at scale and uh, shifts from hunter-gatherer lifestyle to settled agriculture may have depended on many things as to where they were when the uh, hunting gathering be started to become unviable and they had to move to agriculture versus where the fertile lands are now and how diffusion of agriculture and settlements and growing populations uh, may have dispersed uh, during the Holocene uh, based on fertile lands and other issues. Um, okay, so let's leave it here and come back and look at uh, some specific uh, kind of case studies. Uh, we'll go by regions and then maybe like case studies uh, along the way, okay?